Hello, my name is Pastor Ted Struntz, and I'm the youth director for the Dakota Conference. I grew up in the Mid-America Union because my dad was an evangelist here. An evangelist is someone who goes from city to city, town to town, village to village, sharing how Jesus wants to have a relationship with each one of us. And why does Jesus want to have a relationship with us? Because he loves us and he cares for us. And he, the most exciting thing for him is spending time with us. He loves us. He cares for us. Just like we like spending time with our friends, Jesus wants to spend time with us when we are his friend. Well, you know why I fell in love with Jesus and why I love Jesus and why I have him as my forever friend? Well, one of the reasons why that was a reality in my life is because of Sabbath school. I loved Sabbath school in church. I had a really great teacher. Now, some may have thought she was way too old, but she was amazing. One of the things that she would always do with us every Sabbath morning is we would sing songs about Jesus. There's nothing quite like being able to sing songs about Jesus and singing songs about how he loves us and how he cares for us and all the things that he wants for our lives. That's why I love Jesus. Not only that, but the Bible tells me that Jesus took away my sins so that I can have the chance to live with him forever. So that kind of leads into our topic. Our topic today is about the second coming. Now, I understand that you guys have been talking about the fundamental beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist Church for the whole month of February. And you've gotten to learn some really cool things about Jesus. And today we're talking about the second coming. Now, you know his first coming is when he came as a baby and then he grew up. The second coming is when Jesus comes to take us home to live with him forever. But why would Jesus want to take us to live with him? Why does he care? Well, we're going to find out this more, the, this today as we talk about that. So I want you to get your Bibles. This is what my Bible looks like, and I'm sure your Bible, well, it might be this color. It might be something different. But let's get our Bibles because we're going to look up some Bible texts and see what Jesus says about the second coming. Jesus says a lot about this because it's important. I want you to open up your Bibles to the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 24. Now, if you don't know where Matthew is, Matthew is the first book of the New Testament. It's kind of in the middle but Matthew is part of what we call the Gospels. There are four of them. Matthew is the first. Then we have Mark, Luke, and then John. But we're going to stick with Matthew for right now. So Matthew 24, beginning in verse 30. Matthew 24, verse 30. Have you found it? If you haven't found it yet, let's stop for a second. Maybe you can pause me so you can find that. All right, have you found it? Here we go. Matthew chapter 24, verse 30. Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man, that's Jesus, in heaven. And then all the peoples of the earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four corners, from one end to to the other. What's an elect? I mean, as I re re read that verse, I'm like, what is an elect? An elect is someone who loves Jesus, one of his friends. Hopefully that's you and me. Jesus sends his angels to get us. Jesus mentions there are four or five different characteristics of his second coming in these two verses. He says that his second coming will be personal. Jesus is coming personally to take us home. It's something that's going to be visible. 
everyone's going to see him. He's coming in the clouds, so that means he's coming from, we're going to look up and see him coming. He's coming in power and glory. It's not going to be a surprise. It's not going to be something that's hidden. It's going to be a spectacle on a worldwide scale. It's something that's going to be audible. Remember, he talked about those angels and that loud trumpet. I don't know about you, but my sister played the trumpet, and there was nothing quiet about that. Trumpets are really loud. And so when Jesus comes with the sound of the trumpet, it's going to be a loud event. It's going to be so loud that it's going to shake the tombs open. At least that's what the Bible tells us. But the fifth characteristic, it says that he's coming with all of his angels. Because his angels are going to go and get his friends and bring his friends up in the clouds with him. Now you're probably sitting there thinking, Pastor Ted, how do you know that the angels are going to go out and get God's friends? Well, I want you to turn in your Bibles to the book of 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians. That's a hard book to say. And if you want to see, it's a long word too. Look at that. Can you see that in my screen? Oops, kind of hard to see there. But 1 Thessalonians, it's a big word. But we want 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, uh, verse 14. That's where we're going to start. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again. So we believe that he will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep with him. This is about going to heaven. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive and who are left until the coming of the Lord will certainly not precede those when, who have fallen asleep. For the Lord will come himself from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, those of us who are still alive and are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And we will be with Jesus forever. Did you hear that? Jesus says he's coming back to this earth to save his friends and to raise from the dead all of his friends that have died from the time of the beginning of the earth. So Adam and Eve and Daniel and Joseph and Esther all of these heroes in the Bible will be raised from the dead and we will get to see them face to face. Because if you're a friend of Jesus, you get to go with him to his house. Well, it says that we're going to be up in the Lord. He's going to take us up in the air. But how do we know we're going to his house? Because Jesus tells us that in the book of John. If you open your Bibles to the book of John, remember that's that fourth book of the gospel. This is what it says, John chapter 14, beginning in verse 1. Don't let your heart be troubled. Do you believe in God? Believe also in me. For my Father's house has many rooms, and if it were not so, I would have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back, so that where I am, you can be also. See, Jesus wants his forever friends to spend forever with him. If you're alive when he comes, he's taking you with him. If you've died before Jesus comes or your grandmother or your grandfather has passed away before Jesus comes, if they're his forever friend, then they're going to meet Jesus in the air. And together, you and they will spend forever with Jesus. That's good news. That's something that we can be really happy about because we know that Jesus loves us. He cares for us. And because he loves and cares for us, he is coming back to take us home. Isn't that fun? I don't know about you, but that's something to be super excited about and happy because we know that Jesus is coming for us. Let's be ready for that day. Why don't we have a word of prayer? Father God, we thank you that you promise us that you're coming again, that you're coming in power and glory to take your forever friends home with you. So help us to be ready for that day, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. 
Well, at the bottom of this video, there should be a link with a coloring page for those of you who are good at coloring. And even if you're bad at coloring and you just like to put crayons to paper or colored pencils or markers, there's a, a, a sheet that you can download and color. And you know what? I sure would love to see those pictures. If you want to share those pictures with me, I sure would like to see them. So you can just have your parents take a picture of them and, and you can send those to Dakota Youth and Young Adults.com. And then I'll get to see those pictures, which I know are going to be amazing. But also, there's something I want to ask you to do. Tonight, when you're sitting with your mom and dad, I want you to ask them a question. Say, Mom, Dad, what are you looking forward to when Jesus comes? And I'm sure they're going to have a very special answer for you as you ask them why they can't wait to see Jesus come. I'll see you soon, my Dakota friends. God bless you.